What's up guys, it's Bromley from Empire Barbell. We just talked recently about the anterior pelvic tilt. Uh, today we're gonna go over some fixes. We already talked about how to diagnose it, uh, what some of the symptoms are, how it can negatively impact your lifting and your longevity down the road. So we're gonna go over some tips and tricks to kind of smooth it out, to get you aware of how your abdominals work and how your glutes work to kind of keep everything stacked on top of each other so that you have that better posture that's gonna lend itself to better bracing, more pressure and stability, which is gonna mean more weight lifted more safely. So real quick, go ahead and hit the link at the bottom. I have a free 50 page ebook. It's absolutely free, it doesn't cost you anything. I put a lot of time and effort into it and it covers a lot of the things that we go over in these videos. So it talks about what good posture is, uh, breathing mechanics, how to keep your abdominals and your glutes activated and working. Again, not only so that you perform as optimally as you should be, because nobody does, but so that you have longevity and you keep yourself in one piece. So once again, free 50 page ebook, hit the link, read it, give me some feedback, put in the comments what you thought about it, things that you'd like to see included in the next version. So right now we're gonna go over a quick run through of some of the fixes that we have for an anterior pelvic tilt. So we already described what the anterior pelvic tilt is, how the ribs flare up and away and the hips are shifted back. So we're in this overextended position where everything points up and away like a, uh, a dented can. So the way we're gonna approach this is by getting more receptivity in your abdominals, getting under, uh, an understanding of how the ribs come down and how to brace, and we're gonna start to stretch and mobilize muscles that are tight that could be forcing you into this position. So remember, the hip flexors get very tight as do the erectors, whereas in the anterior pelvic tilt, the abdominals get stretched as well as the glutes and hamstrings. So the muscles that are used to being flared and stretched have to come down, and the muscles that are used to being locked down and tight have to open up. And we have to do this and drill this often enough that it becomes second nature. You don't wanna be stuck under a 600 pound squat thinking like, holy crap, I hope I can keep my hips in a neutral position while I do this lift. That's a recipe for disaster. So we need to make it automatic. Many of these things are gonna be daily exercises. If you really wanna get rid of the anterior pelvic tilt, you have to drill it daily, sometimes multiple times a day. Now the good news is it's pretty straightforward and it's not overly complicated. So I have it broken down. We're gonna start off with some stretches specifically for the hip flexors and the glutes. Now the hip flexors get very tight and angry and they need to be loosened up often enough. Uh, the glutes actually tend to get in a stretch position. Now the reason that we're gonna stretch and foam roll the glutes isn't necessarily because we need them more mobile. It's because we wanna break up some of the junkiness that tends to happen at the tie-in. So right at the top of the glute, kind of the bottom of the oblique, the QL, the uh, spinal erector, what you tend to see is that movement patterns get overlapped to where the glute should be firing on its own to do its own job, to extend the hip. You tend to see the muscles of the torso causing arching at the top. So people that have it really bad, you'll see maybe at the top of a deadlift, they come up, but instead of the hips just coming through, you'll see the back arch to make up that distance. So that's where these muscles, right around that tie-in, will start to do a job that they're really not built to do. So it creates this, this kind of static. It creates this, um, this kind of miscommunication that happens. So where you get this crossing over, this tangling of movement patterns. So one of the ways we can eliminate that is to remobilize that area and really mash it out and stretch it so that we can start to break things apart so we can isolate because ideally, every time we extend the hips, it's just the glutes pushing the butt forward and everything else exists just to brace. They're two independent jobs. We don't want them crossing over. After we go through some of the mobilization, we're gonna go over some breathing drills, specifically to focus on keeping the ribs down and keeping the abdominals tense. As it turns out, most people don't know how to breathe properly. We usually have really crappy posture. We're sitting at a desk and we're taking a lot of short, lazy, shallow breaths through our abs. We need to be tight, brace, good posture at all times, and we need to be used to taking breath into those brace abdominals. So we have a couple of exercises to train that. Again, something you want automatic, you don't wanna to have to think about it. And then beyond that, we're gonna do a progression of bracing exercises that will really get you used to maintaining that uh, rib down, hip tucked position. So we're emphasizing the abdominals and the glutes to maintain good posture while other structures are moving. So we're gonna go through a progression of dead bugs, then we're gonna to progress to planks, 
And then finally, we're gonna get you on your own two feet and have you practice bracing as we demonstrate in RDL. So by the time you get through this sequence, you should feel like you have a better understanding at the very least of how your body should move. And if you incorporate these types of movements day in, day out, it should be a very short period of time before you start to see your anterior pelvic tilt kind of wash away and be replaced with a good solid posture that has with it good movement mechanics, more solid bracing, more efficient breathing. And those of you that have had back pain, you should see your back pain start to dissipate. Those of you that have had movement issues, maybe in your upper back, maybe in your hips, maybe in your knees, you should see a lot of those issues start to smooth out because you're addressing so many of, this, uh, so many of these dysfunctions at the root of it. So let's go ahead and start and we'll go over some stretching exercises. All right, so we're gonna start stretching by attacking the hip flexors. So with the, the anterior tilt, the hip flexors get shortened. So this tightens up and all of your day spent sitting standing, lifting, whatever it is that you do, is gonna reinforce those tight, angry hip flexors. So we're gonna stretch them out and roll them a little bit to mobilize. And that'll make it easier for us to maintain position. So the first thing we're gonna do, it's a split squat stretch, sometimes called the couch stretch, because you can do this, you can put your uh, foot up on the couch at home, do it while you watch TV. Basically, you're just gonna get to the bottom of the split squat. Now right here, we wanna emphasize good posture. You don't just wanna arch into it to try to take pressure off your hip. You wanna keep the ribs down, try to reinforce an upright position, glutes tight and tucked, squeezing the abdominals, and you should feel a lot of pressure right in the front of your hip, if not all the way down your quad. So what we're trying to do right here is accrue time while we're keeping the glute tight to push that knee back. Remember, we're not trying to get range in the spine, we're trying to open this hip up because that's where the hip flexor is attached. So you wanna take at least a few minutes. You can break it up if you have to, but again, nice and upright, ribs down, abs tight, pushing the, the hip forward and tensing the glute. And you're gonna notice in a pretty short period of time that your legs start to blow up. So you get kind of a one-two punch because it's actually a good exercise. Your heart rate's gonna be elevated a little bit. It takes a little work to maintain. It's a little easier on a couch if you can get your knee down to the ground, but that's not mandatory. Now I'm lazy, I like to do the couch stretch standing. So I guess it's not the couch stretch, it's more like the table stretch. But I'll find a surface that I can put my foot up on, where again, I can maintain nice posture, I can brace, I can keep my glute tight, and I can focus on dropping the knee down and back while really opening this hip. The beauty of doing a stretch like this is that I can hold it for longer. I'm not gonna be limited by fatigue when that front leg starts to shake. So I can stay up here for two, three minutes if I have to, and really focus on getting that hip flexor loosened up. So this is one of my preferred variations. Now in between stretching, you're gonna to wanna to mobilize a little bit. So that's where foam rolling comes in. Foam rolling your hips is very easy. You just need a foam roller of any size or density. You wanna put this pad right to your hip, you want to put as much of your body weight on it as possible. So you're going to give nice, slow, even passes up by the crown of your hip. And you can even move side to side to try and find tender areas. Muscles should not hurt to the touch. So when you come, so when you pass over an area and it's tender, it's a pretty damn good sign that that tissue's jumped up and it needs to be released. So I recommend at least 20 pass-throughs on each side in between something like the couch stretch to get your hip flexors loosened up. Once they slide a little bit better, it will be much easier to tilt your hips up without the obstruction of those tight hip flexors. So the next area we're gonna attack are the glutes. Like I said, we're gonna try and break up that kind of uh, junked down tie-in from the glute up into the, to the obliques, the QL, the erectors where everything kind of gets mashed down and there's, there's a lot of miscommunication that goes on. There's a lot of tangling of movement patterns that we want to eliminate. So the glute stretch, it's not overly intense. It's not overly difficult. It's pretty straightforward. You don't need to get that deep into it. It's just to get a little pull up through your glute off to the side so that you can get a little bit more motion as we try to maintain these specific positions. So really all you have to do is cross your leg, okay? Posture up, abs tight, and I already feel a little bit of a pull down the back of my hip. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly start to push my knee down. Again, I'm nice and upright, I'm maintaining position, abs are tight, and I'm gonna hold that. Ideally, these stretches should be done for about a minute, okay? Deep stretches, uh, they shouldn't come before your workout. I mean, this is, uh, this is very specific flexibility training. So you wanna hold a deep stretch for a long time. If you do it right before a workout though, you'll notice that you lose a lot of power output. So I recommend this either at night before you go to bed, maybe early in the morning, first thing when you wake up. You can do an abbreviated version of these stretches before you work out. You'll hold that for about 20 or 30 seconds. It'll limber you up a little bit, but that's not gonna be the stretching that permanently loosens you up. Okay, so once we did that, now I'm gonna grab my knee and I'm gonna elevate my heel and I'm gonna pull my knee up into my chest, okay? And that's gonna intensify the stretch. Again, I'm upright, abs tight, and I'm gonna hold that for a period of time. Once I get through that, I'll switch, I'll do the other leg. In between stretching rounds, again, foam rolling, it's huge. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but unless you can pay somebody $60 an hour to get their elbow into your tight areas, this is your best option. So for the glutes, you just wanna sit one butt cheek right on the roller, you wanna lean back on that elbow, and I like to pick my leg completely up off the ground. The idea is to put as much pressure on that spot as you can. So I'm going a little bit higher up. I'm looking for that tie-in where those movement patterns get tangled, and that's where I'll notice all the tight tissue. And I'll even roll side to side. I'll find a tender spot, I'll hold it for about 10 seconds. And again, I wanna get about 20 pass-throughs Nice, slow little pulses right on the tender spots. So by this point, my hip flexors and my glutes are loosened up substantially. They're not quite as junked down, so I can pull them into the position I want a little bit easier. So now that we got a bit of stretching and mobilizing the tight areas, we can move into bracing and actually forcing ourselves into the posture that we need to be in and focus on kind of locking everything down in the context of that. All right, so now we're gonna get into some 90-90 breathing. Now, I don't know who uh, coined the term or who created this technique. I first came across it at a seminar with the Dark Side Strength guys. I believe it was Ryan Brown and Dr. Quinn Hennock. And I've been, in, uh, I've been including it in my training here and there for a while. And if you're consistent with it, it's, it's devastatingly effective at getting you to recognize the role of your abdominals, how deficient they are, and getting you to work on them so they do their job a lot better. So. The point is that you're completely supported on the ground, okay? Spine is neutral because you don't have to think about it. So 90-90 because the hip and the knee are at 90 degrees. We're grabbing the wall with our feet. We're maintaining tension through the glutes. And right now my spine is in perfect alignment and it requires no effort on my part. So if you have trouble maintaining braced abs and uh, ribs that are pointed down in this position, you're sure as shit not gonna be able to do it in a standing position, especially under a load. So this is all where it starts. So from this position, we're gonna focus on keeping the ribs down, keeping posture, locking the abdominals in, tensing them, and then breathing into those tense abs. So this is the drill, 90-90, feet grabbing the wall. You're gonna bring the ribs into the hips, tense the abdominals. You can even keep your fingers right here to make sure that they're tense. Now what you're gonna do is take about a five second breath in, resist with your abdominals. You're gonna feel that pressure come out through your lower back and then up into your rib cage. So resisting with the abdominals, you're breathing in as deeply as you can, trying to force that air up into your chest, keeping the abs tight, and then you're going to exhale as forcefully as you can, getting every ounce of air out of your lungs. So ribs down, abs tight, okay, they're tense. and then reset if you need to. This is much more challenging than it looks. After a few breaths, you might even get a little bit lightheaded and have to take a break. So once again, ribs down, abs tensed. So it only takes a couple rounds before you really start to feel your face turn purple 
and you start to sweat from the exertion. Really, this is a sign of how bad you are at keeping your abdominals locked into place while you do day-to-day -day things. If you can't keep them tensed as you breathe, how do you expect to keep them tensed while you lunge, squat, deadlift, run, jump, throw a punch, whatever it is? So addressing this area as a weakness is gonna be step number one towards fixing your issues. Now, this doesn't just apply to the anterior pelvic tilt. This is pretty much everybody. I can't remember the last time I trained somebody out of the gate and said, oh, your abdominals work exactly like they're supposed to. Usually people have to put in a lot of time. But what we're gonna get from this is more receptivity, which means as you start to expel that air, you're gonna feel your ribs come down. You're gonna be aware of how your abdominals feel in the context of all these other movements. And that's gonna be a big deal when it comes to maintaining proper position and posture under a load. So with the 90-90 breathing, there's no movement. Your spine is in a perfectly neutral position all you have to do is focus on keeping the abdominals down and breathing into that perfect posture. So now we're going to start to add in more complicated elements. We're going to start to move limbs and see if we can maintain that position. Again, if you can't do something as simple as extend your arm while maintaining that brace, you're not going to be able to do it under a load. So this is step two of our progression. So many of you have heard of this movement. This is called a dead bug. Spine in good position, 90-90 position arms straight up. Now, again, we're focusing on the ribs being down and the abdominals being tensed. Again, use your fingers if you need to. Don't just hold the position, keep your abdominals tight. From here, you're going to extend your right arm and your left leg, and then back up nice and controlled. The entire time, you're focusing on keeping the ribs down and the abdominals braced. You're gonna get so many of these out, and then you're gonna switch. This is a tricky part for most people. Keeping the abs tight. Don't just passively hold position. Brace the entire time. So this is kind of the training wheels going into a plank. Once you get good enough to keep the ribs locked down to where you can hold position and move without being destabilized, you can be pretty sure that you're ready to progress into something a little bit more taxing. So now the task is gonna to be to see if you can support your own weight in that position. So now we're gonna go into a plank. Now many of you have done planks or can already do planks, but holding a plank for five minutes doesn't mean anything if your abs release and your back starts to feel pressure 20 seconds in. The key to a plank is maintaining perfect position. Do not sacrifice position just so you can squeeze out time a little bit longer. All that does is just reinforce bad movement habits, okay? So what are we doing in a plank? Again, we're fixing the, the pelvic tilt that we're trying to deal with, we're keeping the glutes tight. So again, you feel that stretch through your hip flexors. We're keeping the ribs down. So butts and guts, feel your glutes, feel your abdominals throughout the entire thing. So in a plank position right here, I don't wanna feel that saggy hip, right? If my hips are sagging, my lower back's arched, I'm gonna feel pressure in my lower back. Take control, ribs down, glutes tight, body in a nice straight line. Already right here, I can feel it takes much more effort to maintain this position, and it's not quite as natural because it takes more work. This should be second nature. If you're doing planks and you don't feel it in your abdominals, it's because your abdominals aren't doing anything. This is not a plank. This is a plank. So lastly, once we've gone through all of these bracing drills and we've demonstrated that you can maintain good position, now we're gonna put it to the test. So, this is derivative of pretty much every barbell exercise you're gonna do. You're gonna set up similarly in a deadlift and a squat. We need your hips to be able to move independently while they maintain a proper position, while your spine maintains a proper position. So the first test that you're ready to actually pull heavy or squat heavy is gonna start with a Romanian deadlift. So you can start with light dumbbells, okay? Quads, glutes tight, ribs down. We're maintaining perfect position. Now this is the trick. You have to keep that point, right? It's like you're pointing the back of your hips down to the ground as you squeeze your butt. You have to keep your butt pointed down as you release and push back. And this gets very tricky. The whole time I'm keeping my abdominals braced, I can feel them squeeze, and then I'm pushing my hips through. Notice I'm not arching at the top. The glutes are tense, hips pointed down, okay? Abs are tight, ribs are down and I'm releasing just at the hip. 
back, back, back. I gotta stretch my hamstrings, squeeze the glutes, push my hips forward. Romanian deadlifts are one of my favorite exercises. They're developmental, they're great for building ham and glute strength, for building stability in your upper back and your midsection, but they're also good for kind of being the canary in the coal mine when it comes to how functional or dysfunctional your movement patterns are. In the context of an anterior pelvic tilt, it's very, very easy to isolate these problem areas and focus on maintaining position as you go through that range. And the more you drill this, the more second nature it's going to be. Romanians can be done pretty much all the time. They're similar to squats, where as long as you're not going with ball busting weights, you can do it pretty regularly. They're not like deadlifts from the floor, where if you do it once, you're pretty much out of commission for a week. So there you have it. As long as you're running through a series of exercises and rotating through these stretches and these mobilizing exercises, you're gonna notice that your posture issues start to slowly dissipate. So by the time you've committed yourself to these movements for a certain period of time, you should notice your posture is better, your breathing habits are better, you should even have more energy throughout the day. But you should surely be able to lift with a lot more efficiency, a lot less back pain. This is gonna go a long way to keeping you in one piece. So once again, go ahead and click the link at the bottom, download the free 50 page ebook. Uh, give me your feedback, read it, it's 100% free, there's a lot of good information, and they're gonna help a lot with some of the issues that you probably clicked on this video for.